creative and innovative, two of the cornerstones of the solvay process. Now, the solvay process is considered to be one of the best examples of chemical industrial processes that are efficient. Now, by the end of this lesson, you'll learn three reasons why this is considered to be as such. Now, what is the solvay process? The solvay process is a process that is involved in the large-scale manufacture of sodium carbonate. Now, as with any discussion of industrial processes, our starting point are the raw materials. So what are the raw materials for the solvay process? There are actually four. Number one, we have brine. Now, brine is simply a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. Next, ammonia. Where is ammonia obtained from? From the harbor process. Now, the harbor process is a process that is discussed in detail in Form 3 under nitrogen and its compounds. Now, if you're a candidate or a Form 3 student and would like to refresh your knowledge on the harbor process, be sure to check out my video on this. The last two, calcium carbonate and coke. Coke is simply carbon. Those are the raw materials. Now, let's dive into the actual process. Our first step is the first absorption tower, also known as the absorption tower, simply absorption tower. Now, what happens in this is that you have ammonia gas dissolving in brine in order to form a solution known as ammoniacal brine, just that. Now, this process is highly exothermic. It leads to the production of a lot of heat energy. Now, this is a point I would like you to make a note of. I'll discuss it more a little bit later on. Now, one fascinating thing about the absorption tower is that it's fitted with baffle caps, holes. What are baffle caps? Now, baffle caps are simply structures that tend to be spherical, circular in shape, and they have small openings running through them. So what happens is that with the baffle caps, they slow down the movement of the reactants. So reactants have to pass through the openings of the baffle caps. Now, as such, before the, because the openings are small, you find that the flow of the reactants is slowed down. So this allows more time for the reactants to react, therefore making the whole process efficient. Now, that is one of the functions of the baffle caps. It allows more time for the reactants to combine with one another. Now, another function of the baffle caps is that it also provides a large surface area for the reactions to take place. Now, we are done. We are done with the absorption tower. Moving on to the next one, and that is the carbonator, also known as the solvate tower. Now, this is where the main reactions of the solvate process take place. Now, these reactions can be divided into two stages. Now, in the first stage, what we have is that ammonia, which is present in the ammonia called brine, reacts with water and carbon-4 oxide, leading to the formation of ammonium hydrogen carbonate. Pause. Where did the carbon-4 oxide come from? Now, what happens is that in the carbonatum, you're going to have ammonia called brine being trickled from the top. You know, trickle just a little bit, a, a slow flow of the ammonia called brine. Now, at the bottom of the, uh, of the carbonator, what happens is that carbon-4 oxide is pumped in. So you have carbon-4 oxide being pumped in and where it flows upwards, ammonia called brine flowing downwards, boom, the two react with one another. So you're going to have ammonia gas reacting with carbon-4 oxide and water leading to the formation of ammonium hydrogen carbonate. So this is our first reaction. Now, in the next stage, what happens is that the ammonium hydrogen carbon that has just been formed reacts with sodium chloride. Where did the sodium chloride come from? It was present in the brine. So, sodium chloride reacts with ammonium hydrogen uh, carbonate to form ammonium chloride plus sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, guys, I want you to look at this reaction. Just take a look at it. Look at the products and look at the reactions. Compare them. What do you not? Now, if you look at the reactants, we started out having sodium chloride and ammonium hydrogen carbonate. What did we end up having? Ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. So essentially what happened is that there was a switch up of ions. Now, this is a perfect example of a reaction known as a double displacement reaction. So the cations and anions shifted about such that we ended up having two products and that is ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, let's remind ourselves, we are discussing the solvay process. Our main product from this process needs to be sodium carbonate. So, where are we going to obtain it from? 
from the sodium hydrogen carbonate. But before we can do that, we need to come up with a way to separate these two salts. Remember right now we have ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now the method that is going to be used is filtration. Now filtration is a method that is used to separate a mixture when you have one of the components being soluble and the other not. Now in this case, sodium hydrogen carbonate is less soluble in the aqueous mixture. So when filtered, it's going to be removed as the residue. Ammonium chloride is going to be obtained as filtrate. So the method of separation of these two salts is filtration. Now, we have obtained our sodium hydrogen carbonate. So the sodium hydrogen carbonate is then heated until it decomposes. This is known as thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition is simply a process whereby you break down a compound into simpler substances by the use of heat. So by heating sodium hydrogen carbonate, it decomposes to form number one, sodium carbonate. Ding dong! That is our product. And we also have carbon four oxide and water. Now, carbon four oxide and water are simply recycled. Remember, carbon four oxide is required in the carbonator. Water, water actually is required in two ways. Number one, water is a reagent. Remember, we reacted ammonia, carbon four oxide, and water. So, water is a reagent. And number two is that water is also used as a coolant. Now, these reactions, most of these reactions are actually quite exothermic. They release heat energy. Now, in order to cool these towers, what happens is that water is passed across and it acts as a coolant. So, those are the two rows of water. So, in short, what am I saying? I'm saying that the solvent process is quite, quite efficient. And the reason is because you'll find that almost all the byproducts that are produced are simply recycled. Now, sodium carbonate is obtained and that is the product. Are we done? Of course not. Now, guys, just to take you back a little bit, remember the ammonium chloride we mentioned? I want you to make a note of that too. We'll come back to it later. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is left to waste in this process. So that has a use too. Now, moving on. We are talking about carbon four oxide being recycled back to the carbonator for use. Now, if I may ask, this process occurs quite much later than the reactions that are present in the carbonator. So that means that initially we need to have a source of carbon four oxide. We cannot rely on the reactions that will take place later on from the decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now those are very good because they recycle and so on, but we need to have an initial source of carbon four oxide to start up the reactions in the carbonator. Now this is where our two raw materials come in. Now, when we talked about the raw materials, there are four. We have discussed ammonia, we have discussed brain, uh, brain, sorry. We have yet to mention the calcium carbonate and the cork. Now, this is where they come in. The calcium carbonate and the cork act as the suppliers of the carbon four oxide gas that is required in the initial stages. Now, uh, cork is simply carbon. So, carbon on being roasted, on being heated in air, reacts with oxygen leading to the formation of carbon four oxide ding now this carbon four oxide of course is then passed into the carbonator where it's used now what about the calcium carbonate calcium carbonate on heating decomposes to form calcium oxide plus carbon four oxide so these are the two initial sources of carbon four oxide now the calcium oxide that is formed is combined with water this process is known as slaking. Now, when combined with water, it leads to the formation of calcium hydroxide. Now, guys, let me take you back. Do you remember the ammonium chloride we mentioned? Do you? Now, that, okay, this is where it comes in. So, calcium hydroxide is reacted with ammonium chloride. For what purpose? Now, this reaction leads to the formation of three products. We are going to have calcium chloride, we are going to have water, and we are also going to have ammonia. So, the reaction between calcium hydroxide and... Okay, I've forgotten what am I discussing. Calcium hydroxide and... Uh, guys, help me out. Oh, uh, I've remembered. The reaction between calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride leads to the formation of calcium chloride ammonia gas and water 
What happens to the ammonia gas and water? Yes, you guessed it right. They are recycled. Now, what about the calcium chloride? Now, calcium chloride is actually one of the only byproducts that cannot be recycled, so it's removed. Is it a waste product? No. When you talk about waste products, they have no value literally. Calcium chloride has so many different uses, so it's used as a food preservative, as a food additive. We even use it in our school laboratories as a drying agent. So essentially, yes, it's removed as a byproduct, but it's a win-win situation because it has so many uses. Now, guys, am I finally done, done with the solvent process? Yes, yes, I am. Now, don't let's just have a brief summary of uh, the solvent process, just a brief one. Now, what are the raw materials? There are four. Do you know them by now? You should. So we have brine, we have ammonia gas, we have calcium carbonate, and we also have calcium. Uh, and we also have cork, which is carbon. Now, our first step is the first absorption tower. What happens here? Ammonia gas reacts with, uh, sorry, dissolves in brine in order to form ammonia called brine. This process is highly exothermic. Now, in the tower, we have baffle cups. Do you know the two rows of the baffle cups? If you don't, just go back and check it out. Now, what happens to the ammonia called brine? It's passed into the second tower, the carbonator. Now, here, you have carbon four oxide being pumped upwards. So, ammonia and water react with the carbon four oxide to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate. This is the first stage. What happens to the ammonium hydrogen carbonate? It reacts with sodium chloride in the brine. This leads to the formation of two products. We are going to have ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, these two salts are separated by the process of filtration. What happens to sodium hydrogen carbonate? It's decomposed by heat of more than 300 degrees Celsius. This leads to the formation of sodium carbonate, which is our main product, water and carbon four oxide, which are recycled. Now, moving on. What are the sources of carbon four oxide in this reaction? We have two initial sources, and that is calcium carbonate and carbon. So carbon reacts with oxygen, leading to the formation of carbon four oxide. Now, this reaction is also exothermic. It leads to the production of a lot of heat energy. Now, this is also another reason why the process is said to be efficient, because this it doesn't require a lot of input of heat energy because a lot of the processes that take place within the solvate towers or within the solvate process are exothermic. So they supply the extra heat energy. Now, what about the calcium carbonate? Calcium carbonate on heating decomposes to form calcium oxide and carbon four oxide. So these are the two initial sources of carbon four oxide. Calcium oxide is combined with water to form calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is then reacted with ammonium chloride, leading to the formation of calcium chloride, our byproduct, ammonia gas and water, which are recycled. Now, what are the reasons why the solvate process is considered to be very efficient? Three reasons. Most of the products that are formed in the process are recycled. We are talking about carbon four oxide, water, and ammonia. The only product that cannot be recycled is calcium chloride, and this has so many different uses. Now, last step is that quite a few of the reactions that take place are exothermic, so they supply the okay, they contribute to the heat energy that is required, and therefore, very little external heat energy needs to be supplied. supplied. So the process is efficient as well as economical. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the solvate process.